Well, welcome in, everyone. Thanks for spending your Thursday evening with us, whether it's on the TV, on the Facebook page. You know what time it is? It's AFR time. You already know this guy over here on my oh, left. Yeah. I'm a right. familiar face. Bradley Kendall kicking it to the back. We've got Evan McDowell. He's checking out his watch. He, he's it's, it's the wrong day, but it's the right time. That's right. And it's the same place. I'll take same it. Same place, same time, just different day. And it's AFR time. It is AFR <laughs> time. Bradley, let's dive right into it after further review. After further review, is Clemson, do they have the greatest four quarterbacks in history? What? Could it be so? That's a tough question. For a team that didn't even win the championship last year, could the guys coming in make this the best roster of quarterbacks? A team that wasn't even supposed to win its division last we've year. We've ever seen in college football history. That's a lot of history right there. And there's a lot of teams with a lot of great quarterbacks. And we're going to break it down for you. Um, well, I guess to start off, like, to start off, do you believe – in your mind, that Clemson has the four best quarterbacks well, assembled? Well, from my notes, and I think Evans, too, this was the last topic of tonight's show, but this is now going to become the first topic of tonight's show. I run okay, okay, the only I topic of tonight's show. A little bit of, of reorganization here. I'm going to flip to this page in the notes and talk about what we saw at the spring game on Saturday with Tom Luganville on the sideline and having yeah. access and his comments after the game referring to Clemson having the four best quarterbacks on a single roster in college football history. I think there's a lot of people out there that, res that respect Tom Luganville's opinion. Um, there's a lot of people that don't. You know, that comes with any college football analyst. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think that it's hard to say. As a Clemson fan, I want to say yes. I think we're I mean, biased, you, and we want to say yes Yeah, to you've that, got of course. Your, your mind saying something. you got your, your heart saying something. I think as a Clemson fan, you would want to say yes. I think when you look at the hype surrounding who we have on the roster now, you would want to say yes. I don't um, think it's something that I would – tend to always think about when I thought about this roster. It was just something, oh, when I thought of it, well, maybe maybe they do. It's not something it's, that stood out as It's just very amazing obvious. to me that we are at this point in the middle of the offseason when last year about this time we were all sitting here going, well, Kelly Bryant's going to be the placeholder for a year. We got this new guy, Trevor Lawrence. I hear he's pretty good. We should, you know, he may take over next coming year and then we'll be fine. But then all of a sudden Kelly went out and won 12 games as a first-year starter, the most – in Clemson football history. And it became a reloading year as opposed to a rebuilding year. Yeah. And even though at times his accuracy and his deep ball make me cringe, the fact that he contributes so much to the team in terms of leadership and performance really can't be overstated. I, I think that, you know, it just goes to show what Jeff Scott and Dabo and Tony Elliott can do and develop throughout a year to be even having this conversation because w did you think that Kelly Bryant was going to be even remotely close to performance that Deshaun Watson displayed? Not at all, especially when we saw him this time last year in the spring game. Yeah. It wasn't anything very impressive. And look at the spring game from this past Saturday. There was not – I mean, he threw it okay. but he couldn't run the ball. Compared, that, that definitely plays Compared to the other guys, compared to Trevor and compared to Hunter – I felt like Kelly was the least performing of those three. I think people were very upset with him as opposed to when they were last year. They were like, oh, you know, Kelly wasn't expecting much, but now the expectations are a lot higher for him. When these guys breathing down his neck, I mean, anything less than the best. Are they breathing down his neck, though? That's the question. Because if you read Tiger Net or you read Clemson Insider, say they are, yeah, they're yeah. breathing down his neck. But in the locker room, do you do you think – I mean, here's, the, here's another thing, too, right? Because you've got Kelly Bryant as the, the leader of the team, so to speak, the figurehead – Unless guys in the locker room start taking sides or supporting a different, uh, you know, different players, K Kelly's gonna start. Dabo likes it well, because it's not up to the locker room; it's up to Dabo. You would be at amazed the at the the sway I think a locker room can have on a coach's decision. If the team comes to Dabo and says, "Dabo, we really feel like Trevor's gonna give us or Hunter's gonna give us the best chance this year, and not Kelly," that's different. If they voice their opinions on it, then that could change. And that's a lot. something that we haven't seen in a Clemson locker room. And is that since something Dabo's you really want? Here. Oh no, not at all. Absolutely not. But no. this kind of stuff, this kind of coverage in the media, I think it, you could you could see that. Because, I mean, you know, the players are still allowed to have social media during the offseason. Now, I understand they're not going to pay as much attention to it, hopefully, yeah. as we are. But everything that you're reading online right now indicates that Hunter and Trevor are right there for the starting job, and Kelly's got to be careful or he's going to lose it. I think they like the competition. I think that's one thing that even the coaching staff would agree that they enjoy seeing, especially at a quarterback spot. You want to feel like, you know, we'll talk later about with Jalen Hurts and, you know, his backup. You want to feel like it's not just your spot given to you. You have to earn it. I think that's something that Kelly's going to you know, have to prove this offseason and going into the next year. And 
I think that's that's going to be good for him. It's going to make him uh, probably not work harder, but it'll definitely keep his mind straight and be you know focused on next season. Evan, you think it's it's wise for the media? The, and when I say media, I mean the Clemson beat media to be um, harping this issue so much. I mean, in my opinion, I feel like you have more important questions to deal with in the secondary than you do at the quarterback position because, as we have said on this show now for several weeks, the overwhelming expectation, regardless of the spring game, is that Kelly was going to start in the fall. I think that's a Dabo even alluded to. Yeah, I, yeah. Kelly's going to start in the fall. So what, do you think that there's a um, – you know, I mean, could it be harmful to the team chemistry that the media, the Clemson media, keeps harping on this issue? I mean, I don't really think so. Like, how much do you think the team's really taking into account what Will Vandervoort or somebody has to put on TigerNet? Like, obviously they know that, hey, we've got four good quarterbacks on the roster. We've got two, three really good quarterbacks on the roster. Like, this is a good problem to have, but... Like, I don't think it's going to make enemies out of anybody. Like, this shouldn't be a bad thing because it's not. Like, we have too many good things. I don't see how anybody can be mad about that if you choose X over Y. Like, But it's all everyone's talking about, though. Well, yeah, because you don't, you don't well, it's a fun I mean, thing I, to talk I, I, about. Even if well, we didn't have any competition, everyone would still be asking about Kelly Bryant. I, I get it. I mean, I'm not saying it's it's wrong of us to, to sit here and, and look at the quarterback situation or the, or the roster right now and be like, oh, this is an interesting, intriguing situation. But – it's it's lit. I mean, it's it's everywhere right now. That's all we're talking about. But you really do you really think they're going to Dexter Lawrence and asking him who do you think is going to start at quarterback for y'all? No. Even if no. they ask him, he's not going to answer that. Of course not. No. And and everything that I've seen, I've, I've saw because um, Kelly won the male athlete of the year at the Clemmies, which is basically the Clemson version of the ESPYS for the athletes. Mm -hmm. And I saw that Austin Bryant tweeted something in support of Kelly, you know, congratulating him, and then Cleveland Farrell retweeted that. So I still think that Kelly. I understand the talent, and we all saw it Saturday, the talent of Trevor and Hunter and even Chase. But I think that in terms of leadership and experience, Kelly has that. Kelly's and a that's, senior. He's been here the longest out of all. And that's why he has the support of the team, because the team saw him do it last Well, and that's year. also why he gets the benefit of the doubt and he gets to be the season starter. Like, that's why we all assumed he was going to be the season starter anyway. Like, if, if you have two, three years of experience, if you – we're on the bench for two years behind, you know, the the Deshaun Watson, if you will. The Deshaun Watson. I don't know why I put the emphasis De on Deshaun. 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 No, the Deshaun Watson. Like, I mean, that's a Heisman runner-up. Like, that's one of the best college quarterbacks of the last five, maybe even ten years. So, like, the fact that Kelly Bryant not only has that experience behind him, also sets the record for most wins in a season for a Clemson starting quarterback in their first year. Yeah. And he knows the system the best. He's been around the longest, like – Obviously, he gets the nod right off the bat just for those aspects alone. Now, athletically, he's also a super gifted runner. As far as arm strength, he might have the weakest arm of the four quarterbacks on the depth chart. And I don't think anyone's going to argue that either because we know Kelly Bryant doesn't throw the ball but like the Deshaun Watson or like season, Trevor Lawrence for that he matter. He wasn't throwing that many interceptions. I mean, we talked about how Deshaun yeah. Watson threw more interceptions than Kelly. So, And, and I agree that Kelly probably has the weakest arm of those quarterbacks, but you still look at his efficiency. And I think you also saw how Jeff Scott and Tony Elliott changed the the uh, offense around him. I yeah. mean, they made him more, well, of a running, fit the more of a running threat, and they're used to that. They, they come off an entire season of doing that. To completely flip script and make Trevor have to do a completely different offense now is tough. I mean, you want to stick with what worked last year. Why shy away from it? Just because we had one bad game against Alabama? I don't see that as, you know, what would keep Kelly back from Well, starting. I think it was more offensive line performance in the Alabama game I mean, than it you was Kelly. I mean, you, sure. you just and sat there and watched the, the wet paper bag that was Clemson's <laughs> offensive line, throwing it back to Evan from a couple weeks ago in right. Louisville, and it was just like Kelly had no time to do anything. Yeah, so half of it's maybe his fault. The majority of it's probably not, though. So, we'll, you know, we'll see if the offensive I just think it's intriguing. I think that, you know, it, it's, it's definitely an interesting – issue and it's one that we really won't have resolved until the fall although we're also we're also dodging the original yeah. question we we kind of yeah we, we kind of took a tangent you from way away from that do yeah. we have the most quarterback talent on a college roster ever i would say no because you haven't been able to prove that yet i mean we have guys like trevor and hunter in the in, you know back in the wings and we have a guy like kelly who's proven that he can do something at his first year at clemson that no one else had ever been able to do but i think that a large part of our success not only is on offense in the quarterback position, but it's also on defense and how rock solid that's been the last few years and how that's allowed us to elevate our play to the next level. I'd say you have the most potential out of For four sure. quarterbacks. Maybe not proven talent, but in mm -hmm. terms of what we 
foresee them doing down the road. That's all. That's all subjective, though. You're just well, sitting well, here this and is, this guessing. This is all subjective. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like you, you can't sit here and say that Clemson possibly has the best four quarterbacks. Well, that's exactly what Tom exactly Lugenbill what said. We haven't seen Trevor Lawrence play yet. You got to wait. I mean, we're just talking about this now. Obviously, it he be, hasn't. It could be obviously two or three he years, hasn't played though. yet. But I, if you want to talk about overall talent out of even just a third string quarterback, okay, in Hunter high Johnson school, might have the best third. You, you could say it in high school. You could say, yeah, we can. No, run. well, they have to be on the roster first. As of right, right as of right now, we probably have the. In terms of depth, we have the best quarterbacks on a roster in the country right now. Right oh, and now, in the country, obviously, we're talking about all time. This all is an time, all time debate. It's it's really honestly, I can't answer that question because we've only seen one of them perform. Well, we can attempt to answer that we question. We can attempt to. And I think before we start arguing about other great college depth charts as far as quarterbacks are concerned, I think the quantifying thing in Tom Luganville's statement was that he said four that we have the best yeah. four quarterbacks ever on a college roster. Because I've got a list of several teams that had a lot of talent at quarterback or what ended up becoming a lot of quarterback talent, but none of them have four. I have a couple that had three and several that had two pretty good quarterbacks on the roster at the same time. But And like, like you're saying, Jay, we'll not be able to fully answer this question until after we see not only the collegiate but also the potential professional careers of Kelly Bryant, of Trevor Lawrence, yeah. of Hunter Johnson, and of Chase Bryce unfold. Then we can really look back and say, wow, like we were stacked at quarterback. Or we could see, like, you know, we might see one of these four guys make the NFL. We might not see any of them have a successful NFL career if you really wanted to be pessimistic. So once we see how they unfold and how they play out throughout their college and NFL careers, I think that's when we'll be able to look back and say we were either stacked at the quarterback or we were really overrated I, at the quarterback I, position. I but, like, the teams that I've got right here with good like good quarterback depth charts, none of them had four that were worth mentioning. It was all two or three. Yeah, no, Most I, of them I don't think, have three. I, I think yeah. that if at, at the end of the year, if things go according to how they, you know, should go at this point, you know, in terms of performance. Personally, I think that Clemson can walk away and say that they had the four best D linemen in one grouping ever. Oh, think, don't think, change the subject. I think those four guys can make that argument. I don't think anyone's arguing that. No, that no, we're arguing quarterbacks here, Jay. That's ever. Maybe not even a debate either. I can't think of a greater defensive line probably ever, but in terms of the quarterbacks, this is the most comfortable you You're have. Right, to, Bradley? What? You got a list of a couple of teams with good quarterback depth charts yeah, as well. Yeah, I got right? a couple of them. Only, only three out of the – I had four of okay. the top ones that I could think of right off the bat. was Florida in 2007. Yeah, I got that. Cam Newton. Yeah, yeah Tim Tebow, Cam Newton. Got that Alabama one. in 2009 had A.J. McCarron and Greg McElroy. Yep, the got them too. Quarterbacks. The only one I had with three, or the only two that I had with three, was the Ohio State team from a few years ago that had Cardell Jones. Yep, as had them. String. See, if you're going to start making those, if you're going to start listing out those teams, what I would want to know if I'm listening to this discussion is, okay, how many wins or how many starts did each of those guys get? Because we know the starter, you know, the first string guy, he got a bunch of starts. How many starts did the second string guy get? How many starts did the third, third well, string well, guy get? Well, they all obviously get? to play how, in one here. season. Let's see. Bradley, you said you don't have any more. Uh, those were the I, only ones you I had, had, right? I had USC in 2002. That was my last one. Okay. Let me, Ball, let me. Matt Leinart and Matt Castle. Let me. Yeah, I had Matt Leinart and Matt Castle. Carson Palmer was on that team as well. Yeah. T 2002 USC. Yeah. All right. So some other teams that I have, and you can debate whether or not you think you know, they're worthy of saying, oh, this team had really good quarterback depth chart. But, like, I looked at it in terms of not only collegiate starts and careers, but also – I kind of factored in NFL, but not really. So, and this will make more sense. So, I got 2014 Baker, Seth Russell, Bryce Petty, Jarrett Stidham, all ended up becoming college starters. Two of them at uh, Baylor, and then of course Stidham transferred to Auburn and has had a pretty nice career so far down there with his senior year to come. Uh, 2015 Notre Dame, Deshaun Kaiser, Malik Zaire, Brandon Wimbush. Now I know none of these guys are really good except for Kaiser, who's with the Browns now, but they all started Rip. college <laughs> games. Yeah, really. Uh, 2009, Oklahoma, Sam Bradford, Landry Jones. Now, obviously, both of those have had pretty solid NFL careers, even though Jones has been a backup in uh, Pittsburgh for most of his career. 2005, Texas, Vince Young, Colt McCoy. Uh, both of those have been some of the best uh, college quarterbacks yeah, of the don't, 21st don't century. NFL. Yeah, no, <laughs> NFL. Don't say NFL. I, I was, I was you can, I was you like, can completely write them off. And then we go back in time a little bit. 1992, 1993, Florida State had Charlie Ward and Danny Cannell. Wow. Now, none Ooh, of them, neither of them obviously had Ooh. significant NFL careers either, but at the college level, they did enjoy a good bit of success. 
Even further back, 1984, Miami, Florida, Bernie Kosar and Vinny Testaverde. Oh, See, I'm not boy. doubting. I love Vinny. I'm not doubting Big that Vinny these guy. four guys have. You haven't heard the best one be yet. Great. Hold on. Oh. There's one more. And this one, I had to put a star next to it because of NCAA regulations on freshmen being on the varsity football team. But in 1964, technically on the roster, even though one of these guys was a freshman and not really on the varsity squad, 1964 Alabama, you had Joe Namath and Ken Stabler. Dang. The snake. Not bad. Not bad at all. Good recruiting. I thought that was <laughs> Even interesting. Back then. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that you could sit here and argue that these four guys at Clemson right now have potential to be great quarterbacks, whether it's at Clemson or, or one of them transfers somewhere else. I just think that it's a little naive to sit here and pretend that we've only seen, since we've only seen one of these guys actually perform in a real game to say that, oh, Clemson has four of the best quarterbacks ever, and we've only seen one of them play out of four. When you have a, when you have a chance for – We've seen Hunter Johnson play. I'm talking like in, a re, in an actual game that means something. If we have an opportunity this fall to see three or, or all of these guys play, let's say in the A&M game. Let's say Kelly goes out first quarter of the A&M game and somebody like Trevor or Hunter gets to step up and lead the team to victory and on the road. And that's why I think Lugan then said this. you can start building that, you know, oh, these guys are the greatest to ever well, play the game. I think even before the season starts, if you look at all the rosters in college football, what team stands out with their best third-string quarterback or even best I'm not talking string? about this year. I mean, that's not what we're talking about, right? We, I, I well, agree. this year's Clemson team versus we all agree, the other teams. We agree, I think, as a consensus that this year's Clemson quarterback roster is the best in the country. It is it, when you say Evan, it is the yeah. best in Plus, the country. I, and and people, but the question is, is all time. And I'm saying that from my point of view, you can't really sit here and say yes, they're the best from all time because we haven't seen them play. I think right now, as far as quarterback depth charts are concerned, even though there was only two of them and like one of them didn't count at the time, I think 2007, 2008, Florida can probably brag for having the best amount of quarterback talent on the roster at the same time because that was the one year that they had Tim Tebow as your starter and your Heisman winner, and you had Cam Newton, who was buried on the depth chart, and, of course, you know, with the, stealing the laptop, transferring to a JUCO in Texas, and then leading Auburn to that ridiculous season that they had and just sweeping the Heisman the voting. season opener, if mm -hmm. I recall correctly. Good game, too. Yeah, Clemson took them to overtime. Yeah. I think it was the only team. That but I think that, as, I think that assembly of talent, those two, and again, those are two of the best college quarterbacks over the last 10 years as well, and some absolutely stellar years and well-deserved Heisman trophies. I think on the at the collegiate level, because um, obviously – Cam Newton's enjoyed more NFL success than Tim Tebow probably ever will. Not more baseball success, though. No. Yeah. Baseball <laughs> success, we can argue that, too, but that's not much of an argument. Go Tebow. But I think having Tim Tebow and Cam Newton on the same roster and seeing what both of them became at the college level and then to an extent at the NFL level, mm -hmm. that might be the most talented quarterback depth chart I think that's, that we've seen. That's where two debates come in. You want to look right. five years down the road and say that? Okay, we can have this debate then. But yeah, I, I think, uh, that's, I think that's right, what I'm now, saying. right now we're just talking about overall talent on the team. Chase Bryce should. The, should be. The, 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 should. As my, has not been As I said before, potential. To be determined. Potential. I'll put it. Right. Well, we'll revisit this discussion, now. I'm sure, at least several yeah. times in the fall. Oh, of course. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Once we see these guys come in for a bit, absolutely. Now, yeah. one of the things that I saw, I know all of us saw today, was the interesting article that Bleach Report put out about Jalen Hurts. And I know he hasn't had a chance Speaking to Speaking of quarterback to, battles and depth charts. Alabama's 2018 team. Yeah, you, you, um, you know, he hasn't able to talk to the media right now, obviously, because they're in the middle of spring ball. But his dad had some interesting comments talking about how – Very interesting. Yeah. Well, it was talking about how that, you know, since he came out in the championship game last year and was replaced by – Tua Tagovailoa. Tua Tagovailoa. The Tua best name in college football. That he might transfer if he doesn't get the starting job – in the fall, I mean, do you do you think there's any credibility to that, or do you think that's just all talk? Uh, I'd say it's probably sixty forty, sixty percent probably most talk, and then the forty percent actual potential. I don't think he's going to transfer. I don't even I don't, even if he doesn't get the starting job. If he doesn't get a starting job, I don't think he will. I, I don't think he, I think he's going to stick around just because of what he's done there. If this I don't was know. if this was after one year, maybe, but he's been there for two two years now, right? This is his junior year. I, I his dad said he wants to play. I don't see him leaving. I mean, I, I do. I think, I, it's, I, I think it's possible. I don't think he will. I, th I think he knows what he's done there before. I think, you know, the fact that Tua has only played one quarter before, um, so there's still a chance that Jalen could still come back. I mean, Tua, like I, like I said before, Tua has only played one quarter. If he comes in, doesn't get the starting job, and screws up the first couple games, Jalen's right back in there. And, 
you know, as opposed to waiting out a year to go transfer somewhere else. Well, so. listen, Saban's thinking this too. I mean, Saban realizes that one of these guys, either it's Tua Tagovailoa or Hurts, might transfer, which is why he went after who was it? it was former East Carolina quarterback Gardner Minshew. Sure. Never heard of him before. Okay. Apparently he ended up signing with Washington State or transferring to Washington State. But I'm sure it's crossed his mind. And it's not a bad problem. Well, Saban obviously has got to look at all the different scenarios. And yeah, all the but that just goes to show you that this is – I think there's a little bit more to this than people are they're talking about He might about just right be now. going after a third-string quarterback. I don't know. I mean, do they have one but on the roster? But do they need a third-string quarterback? Maybe not. But if the guy was looking for it, I don't know. I, I mean, and we all read that same article too, but I think maybe it was another article that I found that said that the reason Saban would look – for a graduate transfer is not only because if Hertz does transfer and ca- catastrophe strikes and Tagovailoa tears an ACL or something, you got to have somebody, right? Yeah, so yeah. that's part of the reason you look for a graduate transfer. The other part is to even heat up that quarterback duel a little bit more. Like, keep both of those guys on their heels from a completely different perspective. Just say, hey, look, we're throwing another hat in this ring just to see what will happen. So I think that kind of adds would, a little I fuel would, to the fire, I, if you will. I would will. never um – I think it'd be really shocking if Saban signed another guy and then that dude actually had a legitimate chance of taking over from those two guys. I think that's no. that's only Saban covering his his bases. Like I mean, you know at this point all he can he can't control what these guys do if they don't get the starting job, but he can't control having a decent guy to come in there and fill up that backup role. And it'll it, in all likelihood Saban's probably going to continue this competition for as long as he possibly well, can. Well, like we said with Clemson, it's great to have competition at the quarterback oh, position, yeah, especially absolutely. especially with a guy that's been proven before and feels like he's earned the right to have that role, which clearly is not the case here. Um, I think the the one interesting fact is that he brought two in the championship game, which shows the same. In back-to-back years, He's by willing the way. to do anything. And Well, it wasn't working. We were all sitting there watching that championship game going, Jalen Hurts needs to come out. Yeah. Jalen Hurts needs to come out. Yeah. Jalen Hurts came out. But, you know, when you, were, you weren't minutes. saying that the national championship the year beforehand against Clemson. And in the article it says, and this, this was to argue, you know, per, this is pro Hurts, says – Hertz is 26 and 2 as a starter with one loss in the national championship against Clemson the other one against Auburn in the Iron Bowl last year uh, except for a drive for the ages from one of the greatest college quarterbacks of the modern era Deshaun Watson in the 2016 national championship game Hertz would have led Alabama to one national title he then led them to the precipice of another one in 2017 only to be replaced by Tagovailoa in the second half Hurst embodies everything Saban holds sacred in his process. He's a tireless perfectionist on the field, in the weight room, in the classroom, and in the community. Well, and another thing, too, what was so great in, you know, about Jalen Hurts and something that, sad to say, you don't see a lot of anymore, was how gracious he was yeah. after the championship game. He was, you know, he was very supportive of Tagovailoa. Probably not on the inside, but on the outside. It, sure it doesn't matter. He still displayed that level of sportsmanship that – I don't think somebody like Lamar Jackson would necessarily show. I mean, we saw sometimes how Lamar would get. Oh yeah, Lamar, after the Clemson, okay. the Clemson I, Louisville game, Lamar was throwing his helmet there on the sidelines. Yeah, because yeah, they screwed up the play call. I was never hand. impressed. I was never impressed with the sportsmanship of Lamar. All I'm saying is, is that Jalen Hurts has shown that he's poised on and off the field, even in the face of defeat or getting replaced in the national championship game at halftime. And would that poise then translate to you just running away from the program instead of no, sitting that would, in there? No, that would be you transferring to a program to where compete. you want to play. There are plenty of schools out there that will take a talent like Jalen well, Hurts. No, that's well, here, you want the top seven, according to SEC Country, where Jalen Hurts could potentially hit, transfer? Hit me with them. Texas, Houston, TCU, they're all listed because Hurts is from Texas. So those would be I, you know, some I hometown I could see Texas. cook in there. And then also Arizona State. And this was interesting because he was recruited out of high school by Arizona State before Herm Edwards got there. Um, but a reason he might not go there is because Blake Barnett, former – Alabama quarterback mm-hmm. who yep. lost the quarterback competition to Jalen Hurts is already there, so he probably wouldn't want to du- duke it out with him again. Uh, Notre Dame, because he is a better version of Brandon Wimbush, and Notre Dame needs all the help they can get. Uh, Kansas, because they need literally anybody and everybody. <laughs> and Florida <laughs> Atlantic, because of Jaylen Lane Kiffin. Possibly has a chance of going to Kansas? No, yeah, he doesn't. This no longer baby. has any credibility. No, the only <laughs> description it says is Kansas is looking for someone, anyone, to make Jayhawks football relevant again. At least one player is already recruiting, and then it shows a tweet from one of Kansas's players, and he quoted the Bleacher Report article on Twitter and just said, "Come to KU." So, very okay, weak so attempt that, that to get like him to. A that's like Landon Kiffin telling Lamar north. Jackson to come down to FAU. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's not, that's not going Same to happen. Same kind of credibility. I don't. I don't. I like can I see I said, a few I, schools in Texas. It wouldn't surprise me. I just. I don't it, think listen, he's going to Whoever does not get the starting job. Is there's a 
probably an above 50% chance that they're going to transfer. Well, and that's Johnson what the article said, too. That, to we're gonna make it and there's no reason to say that he won't. If, I mean, if we go could. through the season, I think he'll stick around. If we but. go through the season and Kelly performs as he did last year and keeps the starting job all throughout the year. Well, that's different. If, if you go the entire season without – if Jalen Hurts – Kelly six, won't. No, that's – so I here's Kelly, the argument. Kelly no. will start this year until Dabo A cannot, can no longer trust him to close the game or he gets hurt. No, the main, the main argument between Hurts and Tagovailoa is this. Hurts has two seasons' worth of an argument. He can say, look, I've lost – Two games in two seasons, I've led you to back-to-back -back national championships and should have won one and got pulled halfway through the other one. Um, and he's, I mean, like, like Saban and like Dabo preaches, he knows the system, he's experienced, he's a lot more mature. Tagovailoa's argument is, I played two really good quarters of football with what the article referred to as house money, where I had basically nothing to lose and everything to gain. And... Other than a couple dicey plays and you know a bad interception where my defense bailed me out the very next play, I played pretty well and won us the national championship. So you've got two seasons worth of argument against two quarters worth of argument, and we all know how talented Tago Veloa is, and we know how successful that offense could be with him at the helm. But at the end of the day, the stronger argument, despite the fact that yeah, Jalen Hurts went through some points last year where he took too many sacks, held onto the ball too long, couldn't quite read the defenses as efficiently as he needed to. He still got a stronger case to be the starter because he can say, look at how good I had been doing. And as the report's been coming out here in the spring, he's stronger, faster, and smarter than he was last year. Like uh, the day after the national championship, the week after they said, he was already yeah. in the weight room studying right. film, that of kind course, of thing. So he's he striving. Probably, he was probably scared to keep what shitless he deserves. that he wasn't going to get his job in the fall. <laughs> I, I would be. I mean, if I had a guy that was a freshman, was he a true freshman? Yeah. True, true yeah. freshman came in. I got sacked by the coach at halftime, sat on the bench, and a true freshman replaced me and went on to win the national championship game. I, I would be uh, I'd be and scared. I think that's that's the same argument you could use for Kelly Bryant right now, which we saw one one game in the spring game for so, Trevor Lawrence. So what do you think happens if let's just because we have to pretend like we have a big game this year A and M. Let's just say we get into A and M and Kelly starts the first half and Dabo yanks him and puts in Trevor the second half. He's not going to transfer and then. I didn't say he would, but then if Trevor leads the team to victory after the A and M game, right? Okay, so we're we're two and zero oh, okay. and Trevor won the A and M game. Does Trevor start the next game? Or does Wait, hold on. Before Bradley, before you answer, can I just say how similar similar that sounds yeah, to and Tony Romo? No, to a certain uh, game in Tallahassee, Florida. I don't know about three years ago, where a guy named Cole Stout started the game. Deshaun Ooh, Watson finished the game. Yeah, did it's we win that game? It's, We didn't win the game. Yeah, we went to overtime though. But Deshaun played significantly game. better than Cole Stout ever would have, and you saw how the rest of that season went, and you saw how the two seasons after that went. Is Kelly Bryant? Cole Stout, though, and or does a, Kelly have A lot have of comparisons talent? have been because I don't remember Cole Stout winning 12 games in his first year starting and taking us to a third straight college football playoff appearance. That will be that would be very intriguing if you had Kelly start A&M, Trevor closes the deal. Then who do you start in that next game? I, I still think Dabo would still stick with Kelly just going forward. Unless he screws up again, then I, then you might put Trevor in for the for the remainder of the season. But I think we're overlooking the fact that if Kelly does struggle in the first half of the Texas A&M game, the first guy off the bench, second-string quarterback, it's not going to be Trevor Lawrence. It's going to be Hunter Johnson. He's going to close okay. that game out. Well, we'll, There's we'll your new starter. That. Oh, we, we revisited <laughs> the bet, right? He's, he's getting scared back there. He we, knows. We revisited the bet. Now, one, one quick thing about Jalen Hurts before we move on, because I know we have to. I thought it was really interesting the article said – in last year's national championship game, three quarterbacks played. Obviously, Hurts and Fromm. Jake Fromm from Georgia started the game, and then Tagovailoa, of course, ended it. Of the three of those, Hurts is the youngest. The other two are freshmen. Wow. Isn't that ridiculous? Wow. He enrolled yeah. at Alabama in the spring at 17 years old. That's insane. Wow. He was like a month away from his 18th birthday. So even though he's set to graduate in December, and he's got two years of experience, He's still the youngest of those three guys. That is impressive. That's amazing. And for the maturity yeah. that he showed during the national championship game, post game, um, that that's very impressive. Wow, a lot of poise. And just re wait again. Re sorry, I hate to interrupt. Oh you no, again. no, we got to move on. I know, but on. I just had one <laughs> quick I, question. Next segment. You mentioned how graceful he was, you know, after the national championship. How you know, humble and you know, giving Tagovailoa all the credit, which he deserved it. Do you think he's mature enough? to act that same way had Alabama – let's say Tagovailoa played well, they got it close, but if Alabama still went on to lose, do you think 
Hertz still carries himself with that amount of grace and is still that humble and still sings Tagovailoa's praises as much? I, I or you think, think it was easier because they won? I mean, well, winning a national championship is obviously the penultimate goal, regardless mm. of where you are on the depth chart. I mean, you'd ask any third-string guy, and they still want to win the national championship. I, I would like to give him the benefit of the doubt because he hasn't shown me anything to indicate that he wouldn't have been that gracious. Um, I do think that you have to sit there and consider what he did for his team all season long and in that championship game, and then to be sat by his coach in the second half, that would be extremely difficult for anybody. I mean, that's basically your coach telling you, I've lost faith in your ability to close out this game, and I'm going to put a true freshman in. But that doesn't mean he's lost faith in him him completely. That just means in that one particular game. No, but that can do a lot to damage the relationship. And I don't know if it has damaged the relationship between Hurts and Saban. I don't think it has. But it still could have. Yeah, still it, potentially tough. good. Tough. Yeah. Last thing we want to talk about, we have about less than 60 seconds, so we'll okay. make this a Hit quick segment. Oh, we, we can talk as long as we want. <laughs> quick segment. Um, just recapping the spring game. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't too many surprises. Uh, you know, I mean, it was basically about what everybody expected. We saw some, some good quarterback play across the board. We saw some good wide receiver play. Very good. I.E.T. Higgins. I think Trevor to T is going to be it's a, a lethal very combination. dangerous yeah. combination. Maybe not this year, but definitely next year. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Uh, one other thing I saw, um, Kelly didn't run the ball at all. They obviously kept him protected, so that could obviously change, you know, the way that his game is looked at because uh, he was forced to throw a ball. And the D-line the had a couple time. of sacks. D- gave, yeah, him a, I mean, gave him a couple of sacks. You saw Xavier Thomas get mixed in there. K.J. Henry uh, towards the end. Isaiah Simmons also mm-hmm. played a good bit. So um, it was good to see some of the, you know, the younger guys get a lot of – a lot of uh, recognition. Trevor Lawrence got a huge standing ovation as soon as he came in. You could notice that immediately compared yeah, to all the other no, quarterbacks. The, the, yeah, no, the crowd was definitely into seeing him on the field. And I don't know, it was really cool to see. I, I went back and tried to watch some of the, bri- the broadcasts on ESPN. It was um, it was actually playing in the Chick-fil-A on campus today, yeah. replay on ESPNU. And it was cool to see the level of um, – uh, access that they were given and being there on the field and having Lugan Bill able to ask Dabo and Jeff Scott questions throughout. So I think it was really well done and um, it basically, you know, was a let's just kick back and have a two hour football game um, on ESPN kind of thing. And, and I love the way he phrased it as a two hour recruiting. Oh, yeah. Visit, I mean, you basically. saw the recruiting section was packed. It was packed. You know, yeah, it's completely packed. stood out. Yeah. So it was, it was cool. Uh, it was nice to be back in Death Valley again. But bittersweet because it's the start of our senior year of football. Let's not let's not talk about that yet, no. It's, it's no, let's not, let's not about that we'll for a while. There for a couple also, of times, yeah. and I I just think this is interesting to note because I'm reading this article on shakingthesouthland.com, which I just wanted an excuse to say shaking the Southland. But we talked, I guess it was last week, previewing the spring game about how concerned we were about the defensive backs, our safeties, our corners, that kind of thing. There were four interceptions in that spring game. AJ Terrell. Kayvon Wallace and two by Trayvon Mullen and that's one thing we wondered will that be an issue the fact we don't intercept the ball as much and with uh, a weaker secondary yeah it should also be noted that none of those interceptions were thrown by Kelly Bryant so even though it's easy for us to say yeah he looked the worst out of the four well, of them he still went eight for 15 for 35 yards yep. so he, he was probably the least performing over 50 percent I guess overall I'd say for quarterbacks I mean yeah, I mean, like I said, it's one game. It's a scrimmage. You know, they yeah. were – he may have only been focusing on short routes like he did pretty much but all I last year. But I can't sit here and say that I wasn't getting texts from you, you, and other people saying Kelly Bryant is the worst out of the quarterbacks that we're <laughs> seeing right and now. The art, yeah, the article also downplayed Trevor Lawrence a little bit because, I mean, I guess it's dangerous to get too hyped up. But, I mean, when you go 11 for 16 with 122 yards and that bomb throw to T. Higgins, uh, it says he did take five sacks. So, like, mm-hmm. didn't actually get tackled, but – yeah. They claimed that he would have in that scenario. And a lot of people are talking about how skinny he looks out there, kind of like James Blackman, who had to yeah. play in place of Francois at Florida State last skinny year. Bones. Yeah, just abs- like tall, but super skinny. And that, that could potentially be an issue. So maybe over the summer, look for him to try to maybe bulk up and, and work a little bit. And I know, I know I was watching the broadcast on ESPN. Um, Chris Fowler talked about how even though Trevor Lawrence is not a mobile quarterback, quote unquote, his high school coaches still. Uh, like in the recruiting process and even in the like review of Trevor Lawrence were singing his praises of how he's able to extend plays and roll out of that pocket, which you saw him do several times on Saturday and they blew the play dead because they claimed he would have gotten sacked. But we have no way of knowing if he actually would have. So I think that'll be a key aspect to watch as well in terms of if he does take over the starting role and what he does to deserve to take over that starting role, if that extending plays and being able to move and, and operate outside of the pocket and, and kind of make up a play uh, as it breaks down, I think that'll be a super important 
thing for Trevor Lawrence to have to work on and be able to adapt to it to college level if he wants to take over that starting role and be successful in it. Yeah, because you've seen how how our offense has evolved over the last four to five years. We've become more of a mobile, you know, offensive team. You know, not just standing there in the pocket like you've seen with some teams around mm-hmm. the country. Ability to adapt and make you know create plays for yourself like Lamar, yeah. Kelly Bryant, Deshaun Watson would do. So yeah, no, I mean the future is bright. Um, I think at, at all positions right now for Clemson, it's uh, what a time to be a Tiger. So one of the first quarterbacks go down with injury in the first game. We got Hunter Johnson coming in third string. We think, will, think we about will, Hunter Johnson about, back about, up was it, was second our, string. Was it our <laughs> freshman year? I believe it was our freshman year. Mike Williams goes out first, first drive yeah. of the Wofford game because mm-hmm. takes a field goal the, post the to the neck, post, and we were all sitting there in the student section like. Our season's over. We're not going to do anything. And then we went on. And to then, play then it wasn't until the national, national championship, championship game that we were like, oh, now our season's really over. <laughs> played and almost went 15 in the first college football team to do that in over 100 years. It's because we're too deep. Yeah, <laughs> literally. No, I mean, like I say, there's going to be something that goes wrong this season, but Clemson has shown time and time again that they can bounce back, and I, I really am looking forward to watching them in the fall. But uh, we're looking forward to bringing you more shows in the fall. It's been a lot of fun. we got one more week of shows. We'll close it out. And then we're going to close out season two of After Further Review. Almost 50 episodes. Got to do something special for the big five. Hard, hard to do. believe. Been a lot of fun bringing you this edition of AFR tonight. Thanks, as always, to Scout in the back switching it up for us. New chief engineer. I, I didn't want to forget. Congrats. Congratulations to Scout. She's the new chief engineer at Tiger Vision. Uh, beat out this boy right here. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> wish, her, wish her the best. Humble and, and grace <laughs> when facing adversity and someone getting the position after you and doing a little bit better. You're, you're the Jalen Hurts of Tiger Vision, Jay Smith. <laughs> Well go. done, buddy. I'll take you. I got to play in the championship <laughs> game. May not have won it, but I got to play in it. Scout Tagovailoa back here. No, but yep. congratulations to Scout. Really well deserved, and, and hopefully she won't get fatigued of showing up here every day and doing every it, single show on Tiger Vision. She loves showing up here. <laughs> for and we love Kendall, that she does that. I'm Jay Smith. This has been After Further Review. Thanks for watching.